I'd like to welcome on stage Avril Carter, Director of Sales Asia Pacific for CG Review Pro, who will be talking about unveiling guest experience, trend and strategies, managing hotel reputation to boost occupancy. Please welcome Avril Carter. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. Hi, everyone. Okay, so um, yeah, today's sessions are really all about diving into guest experience trends and strategies. So I'm going to be sharing a little bit of information about um, things like boosting F&B revenue, um, sustainability. I'm also going to be sharing some insights from the Shiji Review Pro 2023 data report, um, which is quite interesting and shares a little bit about the power of guest reviews. So the session is going to be filled with a little bit of data. Um, but also hopefully some sort of actionable strategies. Um, this is me. Um, I'm Avril. <laughs> so before I hit you with a bunch of stats, just a little bit about me. Um, my current destination in the travel industry is um, all in hotel and tourism tech at Shiji Review Pro or Shiji Group. Um, and after following a, a path, like many of you here through hotels, um, through travel brands, um, in fact, how I know Adrian from many years ago was calling into his travel agency in, I think, Car uh, Carindale, um, <laughs> uh, working for a travel company. Um, I've worked for OTAs and TripAdvisor as well. And then that kind of led me to work um, where I am now, which is all around um, solutions, um, which I love um, because I, I like watching customers use tech um, to really improve their world. That's a, it's quite a satisfying um, thing to do. So for those of you that don't know us at Shiji Review Pro, um, every year and often actually multiple times a year, we produce a thing called the Guest Experience Benchmark Report. Um, so today I'm going to share some of these data trends. Um, what we're looking at in this report is actually a sample size of over 9,500 hotels randomly se selected from around the world. So I'll share a QR code um, after I've shared some of the stats so that if you, any of you want to um, download that, you can. So let's have a look at what's happening with the guest experience and look at global trends represented by the GRI or the Global Review Index. So for those of you, hopefully a um, number of you here know what this is, but if you don't, a quick reminder, the Global Review Index, it's an algorithm um, that's built by CG Review Pro. Um, and what we're doing is we're tracking over 145 global review sites multiple times a day. And we put that into an algorithm that looks like things such as frequency, recency, and of course, quality of review scores. And then we also analyze um, semantics as well. So I'm gonna talk about that too. So what we're doing here is looking at what's been happening with guest satisfaction basically um, in the period of 2023. And this is based on that sample size of almost 10,000 hotels. Um, over the last four years and sharing some trends around that. So we've actually analysed over 48 million reviews, if you can believe that, over this period. Um, and what we can see globally is actually that the GRI has still not recovered from pre-pandemic levels. So when I say the GRI, again, sort of just highlighting that's about guest satisfaction. So we're talking globally across everywhere. So whilst we can see the GRI has actually improved um, across all regions in 2023 compared to 2022, which is fantastic. Um, and in fact, Asia Pacific hit, has hit the highest GRI in, in when we look globally across the regions, it sits at 87.1. Um, and the Middle East has the lowest at 83.3 over that same time period. But as I said, still not as high as what we were previously seeing across the board. Um, bit of a congratulations if any of you here today from your hotels or your hotel groups have anything over 90% in your GRI um, because we know that in this in 2023 and even into the first part of this year um, those sorts of levels are really um, hard to achieve. So um, let's have a look at review volume and what's been happening with that. So global review volume has grown by almost 20% actually versus 2022. Um, which is great. And remember, why is review volume important? Um, obviously, operationally, it's great for guest intelligence, you know, understanding what your guests are saying, what do I need to do? Um, what do I need to do to improve my guest experience? Um, but strategically, review volume is a really key factor for algorithms on all of those review sites, whether that's booking.com, whether it's TripAdvisor, Google, Expedia, etc. Review volume is one of the algorithm factors that contributes to your ranking on all of those platforms. Um, 
across the six different regions, Asia Pacific actually had the highest review growth, um, almost 56% across um, Asia Pacific growth in 2023. Whereas in Europe and the USA, they had a bit more of a stagnant review growth. Globally, what's actually interesting is that 40% of reviews posted in 2023 uh, were generated by Booking.com. So that's a huge amount. And in fact, if we look at just Europe alone, they accounted for 64.8% of all their reviews across, across Europe for European hotels. So that's a, that's a really, really big change. So we can see Booking.com, whilst their growth has remained kind of stagnant, they're still number one in terms of um, review volume market share, as we would say. Um, our friend Google um, actually had a huge increase in review volume globally, as you can see here, almost 35% um, in terms of 2023 versus 2022. In actual fact, if we combine Booking.com and, and uh, Google together, globally, they generated 69.1% of total reviews. TripAdvisor accounts for 9.9% um, and Expedia in fourth place at 5.2% in terms of volume share. Also worth mentioning that the Asian OTAs are really gaining position in the rankings. They're not yet achieving the kind of levels of those global review platforms, um, but sources like um, Agoda was up 44%, um, Trip.com, who I think were here earlier, are up 55%, and Elon was up 35%, so all in review volume. So more people travelling, more people still continuing to share their feedback online across all of those review platforms. So why is that important um, for all of you here today as hoteliers? Because you really need to understand, of course, what's driving your guest satisfaction. Um, in other words, what are your booking.com guests telling you versus your TripAdvisor versus your Expedia guests um, for your property and also importantly for your competitors' property. So having insight into what your competitors are doing as well. What I've seen um, over the last year, number of years that I've been working um, in this area is the role of review distribution has really changed so much in the last five years. And one of the things I always say is what is around the corner. So imagine if, for example, Insta tomorrow decide to do reviews or, or TikTok, for example, what would that do to our world? Um, so I think what's really important when it comes to understanding online reputation is really that you know at your property and your portfolio of properties, what's happening at all of those main review providers and knowing the trends. So here's the QR code to download the report, so if, if, you, if you wish to. Um, it's a really fantastic benchmark report. Um, the team really work hard on this um, each quarter and it's got some really good global stats, um, regional stats, and there's also some city rankings. So each quarter we have different cities that we highlight. And I think it was the um, 2023, um, end of 2023 that we included Sydney. So if you've uh, anyone here with Sydney hotels and you wanna see if you're in any of the top 20 in the five, four and three star bracket, um, um, definitely download that and see if you can find yourself on there. Um, so, and the other thing that's nice about this, I find that hoteliers use it for is also to kind of give you reassurance about what's happening. So what you're seeing in your hotel or your hotels, is that sort of a, is that happening at a global trend as well? Because one of the questions we get asked all the time, like, oh, our GRI's dropped, are you seeing that happen everywhere? So using this kind of a data report can be really useful. So before I move on to some uh, trends and strategies that we're seeing in this year, in 2024, um, I wanted to just take a moment to talk about this big giant of hotel reviews um, and bookings, booking.com. So Booking have over 300 million reviews on the booking.com platform. Um, they also know that reviews are one of the top three most important pieces of information for travellers when they're deciding where to stay. And that's together with price and location. And I think that actually matched pretty much what um, Declan mentioned before from TikTok, um, that, rev that reviews, price, location were also the key indicators for their travellers as well. They also know at booking.com that a significantly high number of users on their platform are interested in seeing reviews that are from recent stays. Um, so in other words, recent information is very important to travellers. And we all know that because instinctively you tend to sort of look at something that's more recent as being more valuable. So recently we actually had um, a 
Booking.com's product manager joined one of our global webinars um, and they wanted to share an up a really important upcoming change um, that's about the way Booking.com are going to be making of how to calculate their review scores. So the reason they made this change was firstly that recognition that travellers find recent reviews more useful. And then from a partner perspective, as you as hoteliers, they were also understood that because the reviews expire after three years, it's quite a long time. It was a bit of a pain point for some of those, some of the hoteliers that old reviews can kind of reflect outdated information. And then they also, um, partners were expecting, of course, that if you're making changes operationally, you want that to reflect, of course, in what your customers are saying and also your review score. Um, so hence booking.com saw this opportunity. Um, to basically improve that matchmaking between travellers um, and partners and help, of course, to ultimately drive business. So this new approach um, is actually to provide a weighted review system um, that weighs recent reviews more than older ones. So that will be introduced imminently. Um, I understand that this over, over, so it will still be over a three year period that they take into account those scores, but the more recent reviews are going to weigh basically more heavily in the overall score calculation. So obviously that's going to help reflect more currently what's happening operationally and what changes have been made and so on. So onto just some uh, reputation trends that we're seeing now in this year in 2024. The first big topic is food and beverage. And I see that there's a bit of that throughout this conference over the next couple of days. So it's interesting. Um, Maybe I can even sort of ask a question um, here for you to think about, about, I was interested to know how important food and beverage is for you um, in 2024, because for me, every time, if, I think if I had like a dollar for every time a hotelier at the moment asks me about food and beverage and how they can leverage that better, um, then I'd be you know, pretty happy. So um, what, we can, what we've seen with our clients in the industry in the last 12 months um, is we had these super high, and this is globally, you know, of course, we had these super high occupancy, really high ADRs. And then, of course, it's just natural. Everyone was kind of maximising that, maximum occupancy. <laughs> um, but it's only natural to obviously look at other revenue streams. <laughs> so it's amazing how many really iconic hotel brands, like city locations, um, they've all been really bed focused for many, many years. So what we're seeing now is some of these, what we, you know, traditional bed led hotels um, are really looking to F and B as a new focus, or you know, pushing more focus into that. And that's interesting because it's also what we see that the guests are doing as well. So it's mirroring exactly in line with what guests are telling us. In that sample size I shared before of 48 million reviews in 2023, food and beverage was actually the most spoken about concept across all online reviews. So, and this is just a caveat, this is hotel reviews, it wasn't, wasn't restaurant reviews. Um, so it's kind of insane to think that food and beverage is the most spoken about experience at hotels. And that, that is definitely a change from what it was previously. It actually accounts for 14% um, of total mentions. Unfortunately, what we have seen in the last couple of years, and especially in 2023 um, and also into 2024, is things like inflation and inflated pricing, labour shortage, um, staff skills shortage, etc., are continuing to impact the guest experience. Um, and in fact, when we're talking negatively about anything to do with food and beverage, um, it actually impacts overall that GRI score. So in other words, it's impacting your ability to drive revenue because we know that every 1% increase in GRI, it positively impacts your ADR and your occupancy and so on. So we know that F&B is an area that's really kind of not in line at the moment with um, expectations and guests are talking more negatively about that. When we look at what it is that guests are talking about more negatively um, year on year, this, this is a, a bit of a breakdown of some of those of, of positive mentions, what people are talking about. And we can see that this, there are certain concepts that are really being impacted negatively in F&B, and that's really around room service um, and choice of menu. So I think, you know, we've all kind of been there. I don't know if you have, but I certainly have, that you, you, you go to order room service, you go onto the telephone, and no one picks up. And that's happening a lot, and people are writing online about that. And the difference now is that we obviously, we have the technology now. So, I mean, at Shiji, we have Digital Dine, which is mobile ordering. So we've got that, it's fantastic. 
Um, but the difference is that as a guest in 2024, if I'm picking up the phone and no one's answering, then our tolerance level is just so much lower. So we're really seeing that impacting on what guests are saying and their, and their expectations and their experience. So that's a quick overview of what we're seeing with uh, food and beverage. Um, obviously, very important to hoteliers, very important to guests, but still a bit of a disconnect in terms of meeting um, guest expectations. So on to the next trending topic, sustainability. So just as F&B accounts for 14% of reviews, sustainability only accounts for 0.2% of total mentions of all reviews across those global in 2023, which is really surprising. I don't know if you find it surprising, but I do, because it's such a huge topic. It's on everyone's mind. It's on everyone's thoughts. We're all talking about it when we're considering what's important for our guests, what's important for travel and so on. So it's really quite surprising. Um, so let's understand a little bit about what um, it is about sustainability that we're seeing um, at Shiji Review Pro. So firstly, and since the topic today is about um, how reputation can boost occupancy, remember that how important it is to travellers, right? So in a, this is a recently published report that was done by Booking.com all around sustainable travel. It's a really good report to read. It was discovered that 65% of guests would feel better about staying at a hotel if they knew that it had a sustainable certification or label. So it's a, it is a, a driver for travellers and they find it important. So because guests are not really talking about sustainability in online reputation on their reviews, what we've seen is a huge rise in hoteliers that have been adding questions in their post-departure surveys and their direct feedback, um, as you can see on the screen, about sustainability. So we know it's important, but what we find fascinating is that this is what we are, you know, it's what we're asking ourselves. It's what hoteliers are asking of themselves. And what we sort of want to know is, as well as like how much are guests willing to pay, for example, how really important is it? Um, am I going to pay more, you know, for understanding and knowing that someone's focusing on sustainability? And the other thing that's interesting, I guess, is, is for hoteliers, is that a lot of our sustainability practices are kind of back of house. So when it comes to things like waste management, um, for consumption and so on, there's some amazing technology out there and some really fantastic innovations. But again, like how do hotels like let my mother know, for example, um, what sustainability initiatives are happening in my hotel? Um, because, you know, a lot of it you don't really get to see and touch as a guest. So I think it's a bit of, it's, it's a dilemma that the industry faces in terms of, um, I guess, raising awareness of what we're doing at our properties to the guest and also asking, you know, how important is it to the guest and, you know, they, do they care enough and so on. So we're really quite lucky. Um, Shiji Review Pro, we have a lot of clients that are really leading the way in this area um, and we're really working closely with them in that. Um, this is a breakdown of the sustainability mentions by the different segments. So this is from online reviews where, where people are talking about sustainability, what are they talking about? Um, and we can see that there's definitely a little bit more coming from the luxury sort of five-star segment. So more people are talking about it if they've stayed in, say, a, a deluxe five-star hotel than, a, than, say, a three-star hotel. And it's also sort of difficult with those rise in rates and ADR and so on when I was talking, you know, when you're talking about the super luxury, like the peninsulas, the one and onlys, the Belmonts, et cetera, it's really difficult to understand within those guest segments um, what is sustainable? Like if I'm paying $5,000 a night for a hotel, like I still want fresh towels or, or, or do I? I don't know. Or maybe I do if I'm a 65-year-old guest but maybe different to a 25-year-old guest, right? But um, so it is a challenge to kind of understand um, for hoteliers kind of where they want to be with regards to sustainability. Um, what is important that we see from a guest satisfaction perspective is that operationally, of course, you have to be aligned. So it's not good enough to have like a, you know, cute communication card in your bathroom that says, hey, you know, hang your towels up and we won't replace them. And then as a guest, you do the right thing and you hang your towels up and then you go out and you come back and they've replaced your towels again, right? So um, it's the kind of thing that, that guests just have zero tolerance for. Um, and it's really important, obviously, that whatever, you know, initiative that you do put in place operationally, your teams are aligned. And of course, that, you know, goes for not just sustainability, but everything. Um, so one more slide about uh, sustainability that's quite fascinating is how guests are talking about it. 
and what they're saying. So what we see here is um, we're drilling down into those sustainable mentions um, and we can see that when people are talking about nature and things like environmentally friendly, green, etc., cetera, it's, it's positive, like super positive. However, when we look at concepts like plastic, we can see that there's a huge number of negative mentions. So what does that tell us? It kind of tells us obviously that guests aren't talking about plastic-free initiatives, for example. So they're just talking about it when, they, when, they, when there's a lack of it or something. So it's a little bit like technology and price. We kind of see the same thing in um, the way that people talk about that online. It's rare to see like really positive technology mentions, for example. So we're seeing the same trend here with um, sustainability. Um, so like as a hotel, you might be completely plastic free, but as a guest, I'm not kind of rewarding you online and talking about it. So it's another sort of disconnect, I guess, a bit like F&B. So I would have liked to share a bit more on this topic. <laughs> it's a bit of a passion of mine. Um, and, um, but there's some sort of general insights around um, what I think is interesting is there's kind of dichotomy around this topic in general in sustainability about how we as like consumers and citizens of the world view corporations, um, NGOs, companies, etc. cetera. Um, that on the one hand, our interest in the topic is really growing. Everyone has a high, not everyone, but a lot of people have a high interest in this topic. But at the same time, um, they're seeing that trust in organisations like governments and organisations is declining. So it kind of represents a bit of an opportunity, I think, for us as an industry to, on the one hand, like harness that interest that people have in sustainability, um, but also grow their trust in us as to what you know we are doing to address that. So. Um, if you, you know, we're talking about what will guests pay and so on, you think about um, what we're seeing from customers, as in hotel customers, that we see that are finding success in this area is kind of acknowledging that on the one hand, there's really powerful booking drivers like destination, location and stuff, recommendations, that's always going to be strong drivers of, um, of bookings. Um, and it's difficult for, say, sustainability to compete with that. Like, it's not necessarily going to be your number one driver. But what we do see, what really makes sense and what hotel customers are doing really well when they do it is to bring sustainability together with quality. Um, and that sustainability kind of needs to add to the experience um, and to the product. And then that's sort of how that can kind of lead to, um, to impacting that area. So just to summarise what we're seeing outside of... F&B and sustainability that I just mentioned, it's really kind of going back to basics. So we see, you know, 2023 was this incredible year of high performance, high revenue, et cetera. But now many of the C-suite hoteliers, like when we ask a CEO of a hotel group, for example, at the moment, what's your focus for 2024? Um, it's focusing on back to basics like, you know, room cleanliness and um, making sure that you nail that warm experience, ensuring F&B delivery um, is meeting guest expectations and so on because we can sort of get ahead of ourselves and talk about AI and personalisation, which actually I'm about to in a minute, but a reminder that obviously, you know, you've got to have your ducks in a row before you, um, before you jump into that. So the reason I just mentioned that is what I'm sort of going to talk about now and summarise in terms of what we're seeing in, in, in this area um, is that none of that none of this kind of matters if you have an unclean room, basically. So if you've got the basics um, covered, like now we need to understand, like what are the next steps? Um, what do we need to do in 2024 and beyond? And um, what we're seeing is this importance of customer experience um, and many, many hotels and, and hotel groups um, and, and accommodation providers are really prioritising this as a goal. Um, we have a lot of anticipated trends like hyper personalization um, how to lever, leverage customer data for tailored experiences um, to different guest segments and how to really navigate the delicate balance between personalisation and privacy. Um, so, you know, for example, at Shiji, um, one of the things we're doing with our new Shiji Enterprise platform, our PMS, um, is single profiles. Um, so that's the ability within the PMS to have a single profile that travels with me around the world. So this is where hoteliers need to be, basically. 84% um, of customers um, believe that personalised experiences are as important to the actual product or service. So having that personalised experience is a really big deal. So it's kind of difficult as an industry, we know the importance of this hyper-personalisation. So 
Um, you know, we're talking about the omni-channel to the guest. So, like, for example, if on Europe, I should be communicating with my guest on WhatsApp. Um, if I'm in Australia, it's SMS. Um, so we sort of have this challenge of talking to the guest across all of those channels. Um, and then on top of that, we also know that our guest expects us to know and anticipate all their needs and expectations. Um, so having this sort of 360 degree view of this at the heart of your operation, um, with the ability to use those channels to then communicate to your guests um, can be sort of like both the challenge but also um, the opportunity. So this 360 degree unified customer profile represents kind of a paradigm shift um, in how we manage guest experiences. So it's not just like a collection of data points, um, but it's kind of like a living, evolving portrait of each guest, if you imagine, that kind of interacts with every service touch point. And this is really crucial for personalising the guest experience and ensuring this consistent quality across um, our operations. So at the basic level, this is basically how technology can really support us and ensure that we've got this kind of consistent customer experience. Um, and also, I guess it's also saying how it can support us as hoteliers and not having to rely on, you know, Graham, the concierge, who happens to know these guests that have been staying here for 10 years. So how do we kind of like harness data to understand that and help us as, as hoteliers? So by sort of merging guest profiles from various systems like OTAs and other external sources into this singular profile, and that it's accessible across all points of engagement with the guest, um, we can have this kind of unified and personalised experience. And it can help also, of course, simplify operational processes, but of course, really elevate the guest experience. So as a simple example, like having visibility um, in your day-to-day -day systems, like your PMS, for example, either at your hotel, um, and being able to see the previous guest feedback, for example, in one place within one system um, and how that could really elevate things. So think about, you know, being able to see, oh, okay, someone, the, the receptionist sees when someone comes to the desk, oh, here's, here's Avril, she stayed um, five times with us before at other properties within our group. Oh, and I can see last time she stayed, she stayed at our sister property um, and um, she wasn't very happy with um, the cleanliness of the bathroom or something. So like having that kind of understanding, you know, are they a promoter, are they a detractor and sort of bringing that into operations and kind of merging that together. So it's not just like a marketing function, it's coming into, into operations um, is, is really valuable. So, um, and of, of course, my favourite is around data-driven decision-making, so that's obviously one of the big benefits of that as well. So thanks for your uh, attention today. Um, for those of you not familiar with the Shiju Group, a little plug, um, we're a multinational technology company um, and we provide software solutions um, across um, hospitality, food service. Some of you may know us for our point-of-sale system infrasys, um, from our property management system, payment gateways, Distribution and, of course, the brand that's my DNA is ReviewPro, which provides solutions to manage guest feedback. Um, and uh, it's also the source of all the amazing data that you've seen today. So thanks once again. Um, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn or you have questions after we're doing the roundtables um, um, or any other method you want to stalk me on. Um, and um, thanks also to, uh, to Adrian for, for, the, for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as I said, if you stick around for roundtables, uh, Avril was going to be manning one of the roundtables.